Hi, welcome to Conversion Conversations. This is Cameron, and today I'm talking to Brad Wellman, who uh, worked his way to second place at the Gen Con 2019 Transformers TCG uh, Energon Invitational Qualifier. Brad, how are you doing today? I am doing pretty well. How about you? Pretty good myself. Excited to talk to you. And it, I'm trying to remember, because I'll admit I am pretty terrible with names and faces. We met before at origins correct uh correct we didn't talk too much but we yeah we, we chatted for a little bit so uh i know uh i talked to you guys you and zach uh, a bit more this time um it took me a little while to qualify so i know i was i was uh focused on that um but i know uh you and, and zach I believe ran the same deck. Um, did you run it through all the preliminaries you played in and the quali- uh, top 32, or were you playing different stuff to get up to top 32? Um, so we ran essentially the same deck. We both put our own little twist on it, things that play to our strengths. Mm-hmm. And um, played in the first uh, qualifier, and I qualified, so I didn't play again after that. Yep. And then I think Zach qualified in the Friday morning one with me. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. So uh, you guys are, are you, uh, you're Indiana native? Yes. Was Gen Con, was that like a un- first time experience for you or have you been before? Uh, the first time I went was last year. Um, I went just for Transformers. Oh, really? So I guess that, that kind of leads into my, my next question, which is I've always been curious about how everyone got into the trading card game. Were you a TCG person before Transformers came out? Not really. I mean, back in the in the day, I played like versions of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. Yep. Got into the, like, the physical cards so much. Gotcha, gotcha. What got you? What got you into the Transformers trading card game? I'm assuming were you a Transformers fan first, and then a card game person second? Uh, definitely. Uh, I grew up with Transformers. Um, they For- sat me, and she recorded like all the episodes. So that's all I would do. I would just watch them over and over. Oh, gotcha. For you, which was the Transformers that you grew up with? Was that like the original series, or was it Beast? Like for me, it was Beast Wars. I grew up with G1. But then I, I've seen every series. Okay, gotcha. Oh, sweet. So this is exciting. I think you're <laughs> the first person I've talked to. I haven't gotten a chance to talk to like the Wreck and Roll guys um, in an interview yet. But I think you're the, the first person I've talked to that might have watched as much as I have. Are you watching the current series, uh, Cyberverse? Uh, no, I've not gotten around to that yet. It's it's okay. It's fun. But it's... um. Uh, for me, like the the bit most impactful ones were Beast Wars, and then I really loved Animated, and then I thought Prime was was pretty sweet. Also, I don't know I thought, for for you in terms of fiction where they rank. I thought Prime was pretty good as well. Um, mm-hmm. Animated, I didn't too. It was a little cartoony, which is obviously the point of it. It's animated, but yeah. Yeah, animated like, was kind of a slow burn. Like it, it, it started getting kind of some darker tones like later in the seasons. Um, but I know a lot of people were were struggling in the first season with kind of the tone of the show and then the style. And then Prime, it was just dark off the bat, pretty much. With like yeah, the Jumper dying, you know. Yeah, that like that five episode miniseries is still like like. All of Prime I liked, but that first those first five episodes to me were really really special. Just because like I was like, oh holy crap, <laughs> what are they doing in a kids cartoon? It was a lot right. of fun. So for you, uh, when you I guess you you said Gen Con uh, last year, you came to it for Transformers, and that's where Transformers launched. So you were there kind of from the beginning. Um, and as far as I know, are are you like in Indianapolis proper or somewhere else in Indiana? It was uh, roughly an hour north in Lafayette. Gotcha. So in, in that area, is has the scene, since you know it got to start at Gen Con in Indianapolis, has the scene been pretty consistent? Um, there's not really a scene in Lafayette. Me and Zach and another guy by the name of Aaron Smith 
who has a Transformers podcast. Yep. What the name of it is because I've mentioned his name a couple times. Uh, WTF at TFW, I think. Okay. Um, three of us. We know there's some other people that play, but we can't seem to get entice it all them. Yeah. Um, and then Indy has a decent scene from what I've heard, but I've not made it down there to actually do anything. Yeah, it's far enough out of the way that you got to kind of commit to going on like a Saturday or something with, with you and uh, you and Zach have both qualified now. Uh, or I think I forget, did either of you qualify at origins itself for uh, no, the energy invitational? It, Zach made it to top 32 yep. and then he lost to bugs. That was it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I had the same story then. So now you guys are both qualified, um, right? All you got to do is get one more <laughs> in the store and then, between Aaron and whoever that other person is, they can do a local qualifier, right. I guess. Um, yeah, we need. Yeah, go ahead. So we need to figure something out to get Aaron in. Uh, I've taught my girlfriend how to play, so maybe. <laughs> around, yep. Uh, we can just get her to play. Yeah. So now that now that you have qualified, um, I guess I'm curious with with because uh, it's been cool to hear like between the three of you, you Zach and Aaron. Um, you brought you and Zach brought similar decks. Aaron brought something different, but all three of you brought, I think, decks that were a little unexpected. So between the three of you, have you had plenty of time? Like, were you feeling prepped and ready going into Gen Con, uh, all tested, or was there still some uh, nervousness about just the the size of the event compared to what exists locally? Um, we. Aaron too much. Um, he ended up having to travel for a um, mm-hmm. in Toronto. And uh, he kind of does his own thing a little bit. A multiple times a week usually at my house. It's here, you know. Oh, nice. Consistent. Yeah, so, so with your, I guess with the testing between the two of you, was it just kind of taking the deck and running it through the gauntlet of like insecticons, aerial bots, uh, Optimus prime battlefield legend, that sort of stuff. With this one, with Gen Con, we did things better than we did at origins because origins, we kind of just kept playing the same decks that we were going to play, mm-hmm. play against the archetypes. You know, we didn't play against bugs or Optimus prime or, you know, a lot of things like that. This time, I made a deck just for bugs, just for, and I I built a Optimus deck as well for myself. Mm-hmm. Playing until I started playing. That was the originator of the deck that we played. About yep. a few things through uh, playtesting, we're just too good to pass up. So that's what we. Sorry, can you repeat? I think you broke up on the last sentence a little bit. Um, the untaps were just too good, so we end up just deciding to play that. The cars deck, ready, going to play it, and like I chose to play it like... Oh, so that's interesting. Definitely, like... And and that I think that's what we saw the strength of in the the uh, top thirty two were the the decks that could hit hard but had those untap effects. And your deck, I mean, uh, looking through and looking through, you know, Stefan's video on uh, S. Dot um the, the video that you and Zach did with him, like your deck is designed all around hitting, you know, as hard as possible and getting those untaps to hit again and again. Um, would you say? I guess I, there, there were a couple questions in the deck list I had for you specifically. Um, was there a particular reason you weren't running um, the Reckless Charge? Uh, that one I noticed kind of for a deck that hits as hard as it does. Um, I, I, was, I was curious about the absence of that particular action. Or if you've, you, I guess you felt that um, other things like the Supercharge with your double pips got you more value, I guess. Yeah, um, I don't like necessarily to damage my characters too much. 
Um, you know, I play PC Tyranny a lot on uh, Lionizer, so my main target for which is taken out of play for that. Yep, if, I see. So if, if you piece through Tyranny Lionizer too early, then you're not you're not as willing to put three damage on Wheeljack or Cliff Jumper. I follow you. And there was just, uh, a couple different matches where Wheeljack and he survived by one, and he had no damage on him to begin with. So I feel like if I would have put a uh, reckless charge on him, point died and probably lost that match. Yep. Yeah. I can see that, yeah, because he's sitting at, if I, he's got 13 health or 12 health, 13? He's uh, 13 and 2 yep. defense on his, uh, his attacking mode, is his robot mode, and he only has one defense. Yeah, so definitely I think that was the right call in this, right, in the meta that we saw how aggressive it was. Dealing 15 damage to kill Wheeljack from being perfectly healthy, or or 14 if he's in bot mode, is a very different uh, order than only having to deal, you know, 12. I think that's a lot more achievable for a lot of the decks that we saw uh, at Gen Con. Um, was there, I guess, aside from purely mechanics, um, you know, getting how effective Wheeljack, Cliffjumper, Lionizer were together, um, is there, like you mentioned, you were a Transformers fan, is there any character affinity here that pulled you to cars in general versus any of the other um, aggro type decks? Or was it just uh, the fact that, you know, you saw how effective the untap effects that cars had were? It was more the untap effects with cars, but I, uh, Wheeljack was always one of my favorite uh, characters. Because mm -hmm. he was like, you know, the Tinker, he made the Dinobots in yep. the original tune and Is a toy as a child as well. Oh yeah, that that original. See, so like G one was a little before my time. I didn't have any of those. Although I'll say this wheeljack feels more like Prime wheeljack, like the wreckers, <laughs> where he's just swinging big and blowing stuff up. Uh, and I, I've got that toy. That guy's awesome. But yeah, so now that you're now that you're qualified, like you mentioned. Um, Indianapolis is a little far away. Do you think you'll you'll be making any trips down on weekends to go check out some of the bigger events? I know they're running through like a host of local qualifiers over the next two months. Um, do you plan on doing any playtesting when Siege Two comes out down there, or is it? Are you pretty happy with uh, what you and Zach were able to cook up? Um, I'm pretty happy with what me and Zach have done uh, with just the two of us. But one thing I do going to Gen Con was um, I talked to Stefan quite a bit building and we play against each other a little bit I think that it brought another um, in, into you know my way of thinking so I feel like this, it can be helpful would like to go down to some of the stores it's just things haven't lined up right with like my other activities. Yep. Yep. Work and life obligations. Right. Yeah. That's, that's the, the bane of all of us. I think, especially like in my area, like there's a, there's a couple of stores hosting locals, but then it's like Columbus and Indianapolis are the two big ones. So I'm eyeing those to see if, okay, maybe I can attend one of the bigger ones, hopefully. Um, but we'll have to see. Do you it know? Would be nice. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it would be nice to get down there. Yeah. Um, my, my August is stupid busy, so but my <laughs> September is open. So. Yeah, I'm for me, it's flipped. I'm, I'm a little freer in August, and then my September gets really, really packed. Um, do you know, I guess I'm curious, you're, you're qualified for the Energon Invitational, you and Zach. Um, you guys are, are going to be going. Do you already have, with your, your fandom, do you already have a character in mind that you'd like to do if you win first place at uh, PAX Unplugged? Um, I've tossed around a couple of different ideas in my head. Like, I would like to see something with, like, maybe Whirl. Oh, that'd be cool. And we don't have... We've got one helicopter in the game right now? Two. I guess Springer and uh, Alpha Bravo. Yeah. 
I, I would like to see more of those, like, different... They introduce the protector bots, and then you have Blade, and then you would get another motorcycle with Groove as well. Mm -hmm. I like to see them expand on some of the um, subgroups. Something outside of cars, jets, and tanks. Right. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you there. I, I'm definitely excited and curious about the diversity we're going to see in Siege 2, because it felt like, like uh, for example, that motorcycle battle, uh, the, the motorcycle action... Like I don't, uh, uh, Papa. What was it, Papa Wheelie? Yeah, yeah. Like I don't see the value of it right now, but I'm wondering if it was just that was the way they split the sets up, and we'll see like some more motorcycles in Siege Two that'll make that card make more sense. Uh, we we did make a full ride uh, motorcycle deck. Oh, how'd that work out? It just didn't hit hard enough. Because they're all relatively weak, yeah. In terms of like base damage, mm -hmm. blue. Um, but even with the blue, they're still the health's just not there, right? Hopefully, Siege Two will bring something new to the table and make it maybe possibly a little more viable. Yeah, I'd be curious, and then I'm always curious about tanks, like. The Megatrons have always been kind of cool, but they're so expensive. It's like you you can't really build. You can build three wide tanks with them. The Megatrons want to synergize with each other, but then you're like limited to two wide. So I'm sure hopefully we get some additional tanks besides uh, Brunt in Siege 2 and, and get some more options there. Uh, hopefully. I, I'm all about like diversity in characters. Mm -hmm. Um know how many bumblebee were to six seven now <laughs> yeah well I, yeah i think it's one of those branding things right uh, the, the, i guess yeah. from a company perspective every wave is going to be some kids first wave and they want to make sure they can always get their bumblebee or optimus or megatron um uh, it's understandable i mean you you have those uh like top tier fan of like the younger generation. Yep. Yeah, I was actually impressed that we didn't get a Bumblebee in Siege, right? Like, I, I figured he'd he'd keep going for another couple waves. I'm sure there'll be another one in one of the next two seasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably right because they talked about how they split the waves. Like Siege One didn't have the Bumblebee because Siege Two will. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And then maybe they flip, like, we got a super rare Megatron and a rare Optimus. Maybe in Siege 2 they flip those. Or hopefully we get four new super rare characters. Is there anyone, uh, I guess, you, you mentioned you watched the shows. Have you had a chance to read the comics that go along with Siege? Uh, not with Siege. Um, be reading through all the IDW um, comics. Oh, nice. And there's a lot of that. Did you did yeah. you manage to get the... There was like a $15 bundle that came out a couple months ago that was like just all of them on digital format? Oh, I have all the hardbound volumes that have been released so far. Oh, nice. So what, where where is the story at right now in terms of hardbound volumes? I have no idea because I'm behind. <laughs> Fair enough. I, it had been long enough since I had read that I just started from volume one. Gotcha. Oh you know, man, that takes me back. What was right that? Yeah, yeah. Infiltrate? That that was Infiltrate was the, the first book. It's I, going fairly quick though, so I should be caught up. Oh yeah. And then uh like as you're re reading through those books, I'm sure you're noticing some where some of the art for the battle cards came from and everything. That's always fun to me when I go back and read. It's like, oh that's this panel. That was Fun little tidbits. Yeah, I actually made that post in a on Facebook about how I was rereading and noticing all the artwork. Oh yeah, yep. Like I just read um, the Wheelie uh, Spotlight. Yep. And it has fling in it. Yeah, yeah. With the with the uh, oh, what do you call one of those things? Slingshot. Slingshot. Yep. Yeah, that Wheelie Spotlight was a lot of fun. Silly but fun. Yeah, uh, 
should be silly. It's it's wheelie. That's true. That's true. So with uh with the success of the Wheeljack Cliff Jumper Lionizer deck, um, now that you've got some time to, you know, goof around and experiment, is there another character list that you're leaning towards ch- checking out and developing? You mentioned the the motorcycles before. Is there anything else you're you're curious about seeing if it shows up as the meta develops? Um, I think cars are always going to be up there just yep. because of their untapped ability is too good. Mm-hmm. But I want to mess with different stuff too. I made a blaster deck the other day. Haven't gotten to play it yet, but I built it. I'm sure Zach will sometime this week and we'll bang a couple matches out and we mean to make the major sound wave deck and improving on a major shockwave deck that I had made, but that didn't quite work how I wanted it to. I'm I'm in the same position on shockwave. I really want shockwave to work. Um, I'm hoping I, I, maybe we get more secret actions in Siege Two that make his ability like the Decepticon actions is nice, but if if I can utilize more secret actions, I think. Maybe the pacing issues that I've had with the deck will sort themselves out, hopefully. I think there would definitely be some more secret actions. I think that's kind of a bit of a theme in Siege, yep. almost. I haven't seen Kai, uh, his uh, deck list. It Apparently, it had crushed Zach on the Thursday play-in him the next match and i crushed him and i think i just got really lucky on it because he never really got the disruption going which uh which characters was he running with shockwave um skydive flame war gotcha okay okay so like blue not a hundred percent yeah Yeah. very tough but he just i don't think that he was drawing what he needed so it never really got going. Yeah, and like posted bonuses because he didn't make top eight. Yeah, and then um, against a deck, I could see where Shockwave would struggle against. Like traditionally, the blue decks beat out Insecticons, but a lot of Shockwave's strength is from hand disruption, and Insecticons don't seem to care about that very much. It's like. Oh, what do I get off the top? Oh, here's a, a grenade launcher or a reckless charge or an erratic lightning. Let me just, you know, swing in. Right. Was there, um, did you get, have any chance to um, check out any of the other stuff at Gen Con after? Because you mentioned you qualified Friday and then, or uh, Thursday, and then you kind of had Friday off. Did you take any time to check out any other stuff? For Friday, I walked around while Zach was playing. Um, Checked out a few things, played... I didn't really get too far into it, because it was... Um, yeah, it was super crowded. It was nice. I went I went and got lunch at one of my favorite barbecue spots down there. Oh, what's the place? Because, I mean, I'll be at Gen Con next year, and we ate... I think my friend Max and I ate at the same restaurant twice, which annoyed me a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's called Sugar, Fr- Sugar Fire barbecue sugar fire barbecue i'll have to remember that one it's just a couple blocks away I took a picture of my food and i sent to zach and he was not happy because <laughs> he had eaten like a cliff bar at that point he was playing like so yeah that was I back. oh yeah okay i do remember yeah because when he came back that's what i was smelling while i was talking to matt i think <laughs> He was uh, appreciative because, yeah. you know, he was much better than he did on uh, Thursday. But yep. Yeah, that, yeah, that's one of the things um, for me. I think I lost like five pounds at Gen Con just because like I ate so infrequently. <laughs> I, I was not ready for that. I was expecting to put on a little weight by overeating, but uh, eh, it, it worked out. I think on Thursday I had a Cliff Bar 
all day, or a couple Cliff Bars maybe, until like, something like that, just because, you know, we hung out a little bit after I placed. Yep. For Dex, Stefan, and it was, uh, it was fun though. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I guess, uh, I think that was all my questions. Um, did you have anything you wanted to say to the general audience uh, before we call this one done? Um, yeah, actually, uh, Zach and I have decided that we're going to start our own YouTube channel. Oh, awesome. What's the name? Uh, it'll be called Base 6 Gaming. B-A-S-E? Uh, Base Uh, phase six, like P H A S E. Gotcha. Uh, based on like the phase uh, sixers. So I think that'll be fun. We play a ton, and we figured why not, you know, take video of it and put it online. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be super exciting. When you guys get set up, uh, let me know. I'll have to drop a link in the video. Okay. That's awesome, dude. Looking forward to it. All right. Thanks so much, Brad. Have a good day. You too.